you look at high-rise Los Angeles, it is easy to forget this used to be Mexico. And yet not far to the east of the city lies an Hispanic community where English is rarely spoken. These people are proud to be Americans, but the Mexican culture is still very much alive here, and since 1988, the center of what some people call a miracle. Here, the lives of thousands of people have been touched by crosses glowing through the windows of homes in this community. Dramatic changes in people's lives have been reported after they have visited these crosses, and many are claiming to be cured of serious physical diseases and mental problems. Press coverage was a mixture of seriousness and skepticism. Television stations and newspapers reported only on the first two crosses, even though all of the crosses were inspirational to the people closest to them. On the 20th of May, by the light of a ray, a cross in a window is imprinted, and people are returning where it is appearing, and each day the miracle grows. I believe it's a sign. I really do. It's blessed us. It's blessed our home. Everyone that has come to see this cross has blessed them. I've heard miracles. I've heard healings. Uh, I know what it's done for me, my daughter, my husband, our marriage. This is the Vega family, all of them deeply affected by the appearance of a cross in their window. The cross first appeared on Memorial Day. My son went out that night. He came home around maybe 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning, and before he went to bed, he went to the restroom, and he came out screaming that we had a cross. Mm -hmm. And I told him, you better go back to sleep, kid. I said, you know, you're dreaming. And we insisted and woke everybody up, and we got up, and sure enough, there was a big cross in the window. When it first appeared, it was really like a big cross full of energy. You know, it lit up the glowing. whole restroom. It was really glowing. And it was, it was just something to, just can't imagine, you know, when, you first, when it first appeared. Because we never had anything like that. Before the cross appeared, Lorraine Vega was bedridden with heart and lung disease and had given up hope. After they discovered the cross, her health was restored. And when that cross appeared, um, you wouldn't believe it. From day one, from that, that night, uh, I didn't have to take any medicine. I felt a, a, a load just lift up. I just feel great. Lorraine's daughter Mindy considers the birth of her daughter Desiree a miracle resulting from the appearance of the cross. For uh, bleeding continuously throughout my pregnancy. Uh, when I was three months pregnant, I had gone to the doctor to the emergency once again for the third time. And uh, they finally called in two specialists and uh, examined me, took testing, and uh, didn't tell me what the problem was or what they thought it was at the time. They said that they would call me. So uh, three days later, uh, the doctor called my mother and told my mother that he had to talk with me and um, that it was very important. I was at work at the time, so my mother gave the doctor the phone number to my job. So he called me at work, and he told me that they needed to see me right away within the next two or three days to talk about um, an abortion because they believed that uh, I, I had a tubular pregnancy, and um, I was lost with words. I, all I could do was cry. It's my baby. So I went back, and uh, oh, I told my mom, called my mom, and she told me, don't worry, and just to pray. Prayed. And uh, I really didn't have that much faith. And now I know it's. This is a miracle because when I went back, the doctor told me he didn't understand that I had a normal fetus. Uh, they don't know how, why, how, or 
what happened, and, and I, I believe to this day it was through prayer and faith in God. See, that's like what we didn't do before. We didn't pray together like a family, and now we rely on prayer a lot now. Every time we get in trouble or we have a problem, and we all pray, and it seems like it works. It really works. Within several blocks of each other, in the bathroom windows of at least 12 homes, glowing crosses of light appeared within a two-week period in mid-May 1988. At the same time that the crosses began to appear, residents noticed changes occurring. They saw more harmony in their families and a deep feeling of peace. They noticed their children starting to do better in school, teenagers who had run away returning home, and troubled marriages reconciled. Senora Samaniego, who lives across the street from a park, has noticed improvements in her neighborhood since her cross appeared. We used to have a lot of gangs and vagrancy and drugs, and the police used to come all the time. Now it's calmed down more in the park and there's more tranquility, and I've noticed a lot of change. The first in May, in May. Pilgrims keep coming to visit the many crosses. Some from thousands of miles away. And this is a bedroom, not a bathroom. I get excited because I'm yes. so full of joy inside. Yes. I want to share it with all the whole world. The crosses kept increasing and the pilgrims kept coming. When we began this documentary, there were three crosses. By the last day of shooting, there were more than 20. Oh, yeah. oh. oh my God. The crosses appear in opaque glass and have the same basic shape all with a diamond around the outside. And all appear to float on the other side of the glass. Every cross also has a slight rectangular thickening in one of the crossbars. The diamond and the thickening are not always seen from every point of view, but they are on every cross. This is an Ojo del Dios, a God's eye, an ancient Hispanic cross which bears a curious resemblance to the crosses in the windows. A single pointed light source is always on the other side of the glass when the cross appears. In most cases, it is a bare bulb. Other light sources also reveal the cross, a candle or a flashlight or even the moon. Standard opaque glass reveals this square shape. The glass in this window is the same on both sides, even purchased from the same glass company on the same date, but the cross didn't appear until two years later. We went to several glass shops looking for pieces of this same kind of glass, but the glass men told us they had never seen a cross in glass before. We had samples cut of the same waffle-textured glass through which we had seen the crosses in El Monte. We tested each piece of glass with the same kinds of single-pointed light sources that we had tried behind the cross windows, but we continued to get only a square shape. Nonetheless, couldn't these crosses in the glass be just a natural function of the glass itself? This scientist says it is. Uh, glass, if it was clear, would not cause any sort of diffraction or very little bit of diffraction. There would be some refraction, but not diffraction. But as you can see with this piece of glass, there, are, there is a pattern of lines and ridges on here. And so these ridges do indeed cause the light first to be bent or refracted, and then, once they come on the other side of the glass, they interfere with one another. We can observe this by using a candle as a point light source. And if we look at it from behind, we can see how the pattern is formed here as a result of the light rays being bent by the glass as it changes speed but also the slits uh, or the ridges in the glass cause them to come out and interfere with one another and hence the pattern of dark lines and light lines forming what you see right now. With me, I do have uh, a window from one of the houses that did have the cross formation. And this piece of glass is just seemingly just like any other piece of glass. It does have a pattern on it. Uh, and scientific explanation for it is the same. The, gla the light passing through the glass is being refracted, and then once it comes out the other side, there is interference caused by the ridges in this glass. That would seem to settle the issue, except for the healings people reported, such as this lady who was healed from a breast lump. 
When we found B. Medina, she told us that even her doctor said it was a miracle. She was the first person to be healed in the presence of the first cross. At work, they have this mobile bill, and they do cancer screens, and they found that I had a, a, a lump. So I went to the surgeon, he says he wanted to have an um, ultrasound on my breast. So we went and had an ultrasound, and when the report went to the doctor, there was nothing there. So all this time, this happened before the cross, and after the cross, my lump disappeared. So I give thanks to God for that. The pane of glass uh, help holding the cross was taken out on request of the people. At first, they were very zealous about having a religious crowd come and viewing the cross, which they also viewed to be a miracle. After a while, though, like a lot of natural phenomena, uh, the crowd pulsated, it grew a little bit more excited, and it became too much of a drain on the family living inside the apartment. So then what happened? We had an officer come. It was actually the people who lived inside of the residence that removed the pane of glass. And the officer escorted them into the patrol car. They were then taken to a nearby church so they could donate the pane of glass to a church. Did you hear what happened at the church and after that? I believe it was examined by a priest and he didn't uh, back or discount the anything regarding a miracle. We found the priest, Padre Pedro Maria, at the Guadalupe Church and asked him to confirm stories that when the pane of glass was brought to the church, the cross would not appear. Some of the people said that God wanted the cross to be seen by all religions and not just by Christians, and that is why it would not appear in the church. Padre Pedro explains. I already knew there had to be a direct light source to reveal the cross. They try several light sources, even a flashlight that they move around, to try various positions trying to make the cross show. They were surprised that they could not see the cross, so they took it back home. The people told me the cross come back as soon as they arrive home. Mom, someone say the cross. Mercedes Juarez now has opened up her home as a meeting place for people of the community and elsewhere to see the cross. Hi, come on in. The cross is this way. This way. You can just follow me. After bringing the cross back from the church, she now has it in her living room as part of an there altar. She believes that many of those who have come to pray at her cross have received healings through it. Senora Juarez had two miracles of her own. Because of a damaged uterus, the doctor said she could not have a fourth child, but she did have that child and was cured from her epilepsy as well. She encourages others to ask for healings too, believing that Jesus heals through the cross. Jesus is the one that makes the miracles. When we gather in prayer, we truly believe in his words. He says, when two or three gather in my name, I am there. And we feel his presence and all the miracles come from him. Not from any human, but from him, from Jesus himself, because he created us. The Bible says that he weave our bodies in the womb of our mothers. So if he created us and created our organs, he can surely create them again. And that's exactly what is happening. When we pray and people get healed, it's because we ask Jesus to create a new organ again. That happened to me. <laughs> he gave me a new womb, <laughs> a perfect one. And uh, this, is, this is the proof. We have this beautiful baby. And uh, it's the same thing with, with other people that have come with problems, um, physical problems. People come to pray. Most of the people that have come to see the cross, they come with a need, uh, usually a physical healing that they ask God for. Uh, sometimes they also have um, a moral, moral wounds, I would say. And uh, the, the people that are here praying right now, they are praying for a healing for this little girl. Oh, Lord Jesus, help. God had made many miracles happen through prayer and um, through this cross. I truly believe that it is through this cross too because uh, when we pray, the light of the cross gets brighter. And again, I remember that scripture that says, our light is from your light. And miracles do happen.
other crosses began to appear outside the Hispanic community, where some people give non-religious interpretations to their significance. Carol Farina found that her cross dramatically increased her creativity. I also think that these crosses are a sign of change and transformation that the people of this earth need to start making by getting in touch with the light within themselves, the energy, the power that they have to make the changes regarding things like world hunger, um, pollution, um, water supplies, air. Meanwhile, several months later in El Monte, the first crosses to appear were still shining forth. All of the families who have homes with crosses are very gracious about showing visitors around. Amongst the people in whose lives dramatic changes have been reported, many were troubled teenagers. We interviewed one of them near this cross, which she describes as having dramatically changed her life. A beautiful cross of light appeared in my mother's window during a, a very hard time in my life. And uh, when I saw the cross of light, an amazing wave of joy and peacefulness washed over me. And I, it was then that I realized that I'd have the strength to make it through anything. Um, another girl I know of was so depressed that she tried to commit suicide. Uh, but a couple weeks later, she saw a cross of light. And uh, she said, like me, it changed her life. She said that uh, she used to be a real meanie and didn't want anything for herself or for anybody else. And now she says that she doesn't need a psychiatrist, she feels healthy, and she believes in herself. At first, people arrived in El Monte by the busload. Since then, rarely does a day go by that someone doesn't come to see one or more of the many crosses. Larry Smart was a visitor from out of town, and later saw a cross appear in his own home. Six months later, I was awoken in the middle of the night, went into the bathroom, and I noticed a big bright light coming through the window, so I went and looked looked out and saw who had the spotlight on us and amazing there was a cross burning in the window it looked like it was burning it was a big glow and it I woke my wife up immediately I said honey you got to see this she went up there she looked at it and she said oh my god and went back to bed woke up the next morning and said did I see what I thought I saw and I says yes and every night since it's usually every night anyway we go to look at it and a lot of times I wind up praying to it uh, I don't know why I don't use drugs anymore. You know, it's it's God or something. It's it's the only reason I'm I'm still sober. And I lost total craving. And that's what I asked for when I first saw it, to relieve my addiction to drugs and alcohol. And that uh, obsession was immediately taken away. That's about all I can really say about it. You know, it's turned my life around totally. Other crosses appeared in San Francisco, Washington D.C., and this one in Canada. Well, I was skeptical at first, too. I thought it would go away. I thought it's just a figment of my imagination, but I, uh, it stayed there. I checked it uh, daylight, and I checked it at night, and different sources of light, and it stayed there. And there is a great deal of, of energy that comes from that. It, it feels like a healing, peaceful energy. Doctors are reluctant to admit that non-medical cures happen, and much in the medical records lacks definitive proof. And yet this document prescribes corrective lenses that the patient never needed because after praying to the cross, her eyesight was fully restored. The medical records of the people involved in this documentary are not what we would call provative in terms of what medicine considers proof. Uh, all of the people who have talked about healing have talked about healing of problems that we see go into remission. Uh, by themselves. The, some of them actually could be proven if we had new x-rays that showed the disappearance of, of the lump, for example, in the mammogram. But once the person feels healed, they don't go back to the doctor. In fact, oftentimes they tend to lose faith in the medical profession because they think if there's all this power here, why should I deal with the doctor? Now. I, I was impressed basically with two of the healings that went on, and that's the one who was an alcohol and drug addict, and also with the teenager who was the usual obstreperous teenager 
who settled down and seemed to have matured about four years in about one week. And then oftentimes if the person believes something strongly enough, the person will get well. Indeed, most of the people who have come in contact with these crosses believe they are being deeply touched. Even though the people with crosses did not know about each other, they all had remarkably similar responses when interviewed. Whether people are religious or not, they all said the crosses bring hope for the world, the solving of humanity's worst problems, the end of hunger, peace on earth, and a return to the world of a Messiah who has been long awaited. The coming of the Lord is, is near, is very near. It's a sign from God. In the Catholic Church, one of the proofs of God's presence are miracles. We know of the signs, for example, of miracles that happen in Lourdes or in Fatima. And we find in Lourdes the experience of people who had been, and it's a small group of people, but people who had been told by doctors, you will not be healed. And they came and they washed in the water of Lourdes and they were healed, I mean, they actually were healed. And this was, this was done not just by prejudiced people in favor of this, but prejudiced people against it, people who didn't believe this could ever happen. I think one of the most important questions that each of us has to ask is what would happen if the second coming happened while we were living? What had happened in my life? Benjamin Krem, author of The Reappearance of the Christ, says, yes, it is happening right now. And the crosses are part of Christ already making himself We felt. already are beginning to get reports from various places around the world. One, El Monte, outside of Los Angeles, yes. crosses appearing in, yes. in the windows. Yes. Is that connected indeed, to this? Indeed, yes. The crisis manifesting a series of crosses of light all over the world. He said so many that no one could doubt that something extraordinary was happening. And as you know now, there are 12 in the Los Angeles area. And the manifestations of the Virgin, which are taking place all over the world, like at Medjugorje, in Yugoslavia, yes. 25 at sites in Italy, in Ireland, and in Australia, New Zealand, and all over, all over Europe. And they are the signs of the presence of the Christ. The Messiah is expected now by many Jews. Rabbi Ted Falcon explains. There are two basic ways that the time for the coming of the Messiah is understood within some of the traditional circles in Jew Jewish tradition. One is through trying to figure out numerologically on the basis of old texts, when, in what year, in what era. And there are those who say, just as we talk about this being the Aquarian age. There are those who are discovering in the flow of the zodiac and the flow of various sections, segments of history that this is the time when Messiah is supposed to awaken. There are others who look at various world events and say that it's through those world events that the indications of such a coming is to be announced. And those are the ones who look and see that the issues in Israel are harbingers of such a moment now, that the political, the social difficulties, the exacerbation of the, of the violence even there and in the world as a whole speaks the conditions which in fact uh, are required for that messianic being to, to arrive. Muslims expect the Imam Mahdi. I was born and raised in a Muslim family and uh, Muslims believe that uh, Imam Mahdi, which is the last of uh, 12 Imams, Imam uh, is a religious leader. Uh, he disappeared and uh, he is to appear again when the world is full of chaos and uh, uh, to uh, restore peace and bring good relations uh, uh, among the nations. And when a cross appeared to his family, Mohammed took it as a sign. I'm an electronic technician, so uh, I wanted to experiment with light and see uh, whether we have one on our bathroom window. So I took the flashlight in there and uh, uh, checked it out. Every time I, I got that uh, funny looking rectangular shape uh, on both of the windows, the left one and the right one, it was amazing. All of a sudden, I get this urge uh, to go and check the window again, uh, the bathroom window. And uh, I take the flashlight with me and go in there, and I check it. Uh, 
sure enough, uh, on the left uh, hand side window, uh, I had that uh, cross of light when I threw the flashlight uh, on it. I think that uh, the, the one that uh, the followers of all religions uh, believe uh, is coming back uh, uh, is, is here among us. I believe that our Lord is coming, and this is a sign. I believe he's just going to come back to earth and take it over again. Although this is maybe unexplainable in physical terms, to me this was a sign that his imminent coming. I think uh, we're ready for it. I think it's the end of crime and hunger. Maybe peace on earth. The earth will be renewed. There'll be no more smog, the water will not be contaminated, the water will be clean, the air will be clean, the earth will be new, there will be springtime all over the world. There's not going to be any more hunger, and it is going to come to be.